All right, the Seattle Seahawks get some concerning news. If you're new to the channel, we're Detroit Lions fans, but we have this channel talking about teams that are kind of under the radar and don't get the love nationally like they should. And Seattle's one of the teams that we've kind of just uh, talked about for a long time on this channel. We we, we like Geno Smith. We like the direction of this team. Think they're going to still be okay. Um, but it's, it's getting a little concerning. And here is the biggest thing that has come out is that Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks are getting blitzed way less, and it's really been a problem. And here's why this is such a big problem is teams are saying, go ahead, we're not even going to get to you, and you're just not going to be able to effectively read defenses and make plays. So here it is right here. Over the last four games, Geno Smith has been blitzed significantly less than the first four games. So the Giants got to him seven times. But other than that, the other teams are only getting to him once. So when you only get sacked once, you're like, let's go. Let's go. What do we got to do? He's got more time to throw. He's got time to throw. Guys should be open. Scheme should be working. And he can't even hit guys and move the chains on top of that the four-man rush that you're facing is getting to you or can get to you so he's not able to scramble as much he's not able there's just there's something missing and so the book is out now that the Seattle Seahawks you do not have to blitz them and by the way on this channel we'd like to keep it generally positive for sure but but it's like here this is bad, but I also think that there's a posit there's some positives to it. But here, look at this. The 49ers only blitzed Geno Smith five times out of 50-plus dropbacks. The Giants only blitzed about 22% of the time that prior week. The, might, the book might be out on this passing offense. Then the Bills game happened without DK Metcalf. Now they've got a real problem on our hands. Geno Smith, 3.9 yards air attempt was the second lowest as the Seahawks starter. Buffalo only blitzed Smith 18% of the time, and this was the lowest pressure of the season. He had time. There weren't open receivers. So he has time. Either he's not seeing them, receivers aren't getting open. There's something broken within the offense. They're not running the ball particularly well. There's something lacking. And honestly, again, I don't say this to just – this is a, I want to make this about the Seahawks, but when you see an incredibly – efficient offense in the Lions it's just like I don't even know what to make of it they can move the ball at will you start to see okay it's 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 everything it just it just is right and it's like a wheel and when something's off it really throws everything else off but when it's on man a wheel can just roll so easily and that's what the Lions have with every facet of the game of, of the offense working with the Seahawks there's just like oh man what the heck what what is it? And so Geno Smith, and this is, again, from an outsider's perspective, was looked at like, dang, this dude can kind of pretty much do it all. Like, what else do you need? It's perfect because you've got all these quarterbacks making more and more money. Him and Baker Mayfield were kind of in this middle of the pack. Didn't have to pay them a ton, but they could still get the job done, take you to the playoffs and win playoff games. Plus, you had a lot of money to work with outside of them. Like, this, is, this might be the actual formula. And then now it's like, oh, shoot, what if it's, oh, shoot, right? And it's still early, not early, but I think it's still early in the struggles that you can be like, okay, they can get things figured out, and he's good enough to get things figured out. But I also think, so you don't want to panic, I guess is what I'm saying. And if that can get figured out, then be in good spot. Also, I think it, if you're like, okay, we're not going to get blitzed, we're just not really you can kind of work around that as well. So I think it's pretty interesting to see how that, that all comes out. Now, a couple other things from this last game that I think you have to be kind of uh, – let, let, let's go to it here. A couple other things from this game that um, – from the uh, from the Bills game. I, I hate to stay there, but let's just do it. What the heck. So DK Met, Metcalf – Man, we made videos about him quite a bit on this channel about how, man, is he, what is he, what is he? And, you know, from an outsider's perspective, it's like he is like, yeah, let's go, baby. And then the next thing you know, he's he's not very good. Then you're like, man, he's not very good. I don't know. And then he makes a great play. And then, like, it's just kind of this, oh, I don't know. But great to see him play well. You need him, no question. But 
here's the two areas that you can talk about blitzing, talk about all that, but, and let me know, of, of course, in the comments and, you know, bounce it around in the comments, but here's some areas that just struggled run defense, run defense. You give up 164 yards, you're going to lose. And you see it right there. Another area run blocking. So you can't stop the run or run. And that's how you lose every single time. And there's so many stats that we always look to explosive plays, turnovers, even like big time plays like uh, scoop and score or pick six, right? We look at these kind of outlier things. The, the one that we just all agree on that you just, if you had to only pick out a couple stats would be, can you run the ball? Who ran the ball more for more yards? Let me just, just tell me that. And if it's really big time difference, then that team is going to be really the one. So Mike McDonald's group cannot stop the run, just like Pete Carroll's group couldn't stop the run. And when the Seahawks are trailing in games, those problems are exacerbated. Again, I, being on the other side, please don't hate me for just like talking up the Lions while you guys are, <laughs> while I'm trying to say that you're struggling. I'm just saying running the ball, seeing again on the other side of it. And when you can run the ball, run the ball. It's like, we can do anything. If we can run the ball seven yards a pop, well, then what, what are we doing? And then sure enough, everybody comes up to stop the run. Touchdown, throw it over. The, I mean, it's just right. So like we get it. We all know that, but I think if you if you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, you've got to be a little bit unsure right now. And again, this video is kind of hard for us to for me to make just because we like to see the positive. We like to run with the positives on our channel. But man, the Seahawks are in an interesting spot because the the NFC West is so wide open. And if I would have told you the records through eight weeks or wherever we're at, you would have been like awesome. Like of the other teams, like 49ers are four and four or whatever they are, and Rams are struggling out of the gates like usual, and then you got the pesky little Cardinals. You'd be pumped, but it's just like we're missing some things, and we got to get better. I don't know if I don't know what it looks like. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and if you're if you've watched us for any length of time, like I said, it's usually positive better things happening but it was something was like it's pretty interesting they're letting geno smith throw and he can't hit receiver that's not good so again let me know your thoughts in the comments let me know um what you're thinking on this season it's not lost but it needs to turn around pretty quick and we'll see all of you on the next one